Hi, I'm Zach with HKN. Um, today, we're going to solve a problem that involves a circuit that changes at a certain point in time, um, and the circuit has an inductor in it. So, um, the behavior of an inductor is going to kind of dictate what goes on in this circuit um, right when the switch opens. Um, for an inductor, we have a little equation that says the voltage across an inductor is equal to the inductance times the time derivative of the current through the inductor. And um, the convention for that, if we have an inductor um, with current, the voltage shows up there. Okay, so that's... Um, that's an equation kind of like Ohm's law for a resistor. It, it, um, it works all the time for the voltage across an inductor. So, so we're going to use that and um, some analysis techniques we already know to see what happens in the circuit over time. So we set up a little table here, and we would like to find values for these parameters at right before the switch closes. I mean, right before the switch opens, the switch opens at t equals zero. Right before it opens, right after it opens, and then um, the at positive infinity after everything settles down. And eventually, we will also use differential equations to solve for time um, expressions that explain these, that describe these values over you know t greater than zero. So we will start by filling in the values here that, um, that we can see just from you know, looking at the circuit. So before the switch closes, um, we can actually draw the circuit. Let's, let's draw the circuit before the switch closes. So we'll have a three volt source. A one kilo ohm resistor. And I'm not sure if I marked the value of this. Okay, so. Let's see what's going on in the circuit um, and see if we can come up with any of these values for this column right before um, the change happens. So we're calling this node ground, I think, in our other circuit. So when this, when this switch is closed, this is all a node right here, right? That's a node. And there's nothing in between that and that. And there's nothing in between that. So this whole entire thing is a node at... Um, V equals zero. So, so we should be able to solve for these values we're calling this VR1. Yep. This VR2. Um, okay, so let's look at this equation for an inductor for a minute. This part of it. So we're saying that the switch has been closed, the circuit has been in this, looking like this, since negative infinity. So we can reasonably say that everything is settled down, acting like um, has all the currents have DC values. So th that corresponds to this derivative. If something's a constant value, that its derivative is zero, right? So that's saying that um, the voltage across the inductor is zero. So that's something that's always true. If a circuit is steady, has steady DC values working in it, then inductors just look like a short, right? V equals zero is just a wire, right? So we can theoretically make that into a wire since, uh, yeah, we're working with a steady circuit. And now we can find almost right away, this is zero volts here. This is 
plus 10, and then this 10 volt drop has to happen entirely across this, this resistor, so VR2 is 10 volts. And this, this 3 volt has to drop from here to there, and the only thing there is this resistor here. So um, we're calling the convention across this current, the one we asked for is that. So if it, if it drops 3 volts from here to there, we're going to have to call that minus, right? So this is minus 3 volts. Okay, so, and we also just said that the voltage across the inductor, because it's in DC state, is zero volts, right? And finally, we can solve for the current for IL through this inductor right before the switch opens. Um, okay, so we have, for this current, we, have the vo we already know the voltage drop across this resistor, so we can get the current just by um, I equals V over R. It's equal to the 10 volt, the 10 volt drop over a 50 ohm resistor. It's equal to one fifth of an amp. So IL at T0 minus equal one over five amps. Okay. So now we have a, our first column filled in. Right? So let's erase this. And we'll draw the circuit right after the switch opens because it pretty much becomes a different circuit. But as we'll see, some things stay the same. We know the current through an inductor can't change instantaneously. So we'll use that fact and other things about the circuit to find all the values right after the switch closes. Well, it's not working out. Okay, so yeah, the switch opens at t equals zero, right? So that breaks this connection in the middle and all of a sudden we have everything around a loop. Okay, so now we have this circuit. Now, what did we say can't change instantaneously in between when that event happens? If we want to change, well, I'll just say IL can't change instantaneously. So the current, this, this current IL is the same right after the switch opens as it was right before. But we can kind of get that reasoning from this equation here. A, an instantaneous change would would require so if you have if you had a function that look like looks like that this derivative right here would be infinity right so that means that would be infinity and the voltage across it would have to be infinity and that kind of stuff doesn't really happen so that's to, that all that's to say just that the current doesn't change instantaneously, and we can go like this. We can say that the IL at T0 minus is equal to IL at T0 plus. It's equal to one-fifth of an amp. Okay, so now we can, what else can we find? The other thing that wouldn't change is VR2. That's because it was defined by the current flowing through it. And that current doesn't change, right? Remember our switch was over here. So this current has always been throwing, flowing through R2. And it will, uh, the voltage across it will stay the same right afterwards. So what is this? 10 volts. 
now VR1. So there used to be some current flowing this way through that middle, and then we broke that connection, right? And the only place current can come from is this loop, and we also know that this current didn't change instantaneously. So we know that the voltage across here, VR1, will be equal to, um, okay, this is at T0 plus. We know that will be, that will be equal to IL at uh, 0 plus times the value of R1, which was, what, 1 kilo ohm? So this is um, 1 fifth times 1 kilo ohm, right? That was... And that is 200. So, all of a sudden, we see a, we see a drastic switch in VR1. So this went from being minus three volts to plus 200 volts, right, in that instant there. And also, what else are we missing? We're missing VL. So now we, we know in this instant uh, T0 plus, we know all the voltages except for VL, right, around this loop. So we can just do uh, KVL to get VL. So we'll sum all of these, we're going to say minus 10. Plus VO, plus uh, VR2, which we know, right? 10, plus VR1, which we also know, 200, plus 3 is equal to 0. And that gives that VL is equal to 203, I think, minus 203. Volts. Okay, so we can see from our from our table here that the uh, the current, while the current stayed constant through the inductor, I mean the current didn't change instantaneously in that conductor. This is actually yeah. So just in this incident, it didn't change, but the voltage changed pretty drastically. So. That's pretty much what an inductor does when it sees a change. It adjusts the voltage across it so that it can maintain its current instantaneously. All right, so um, actually, yeah, let's get the time, uh, the values for positive infinity as well. So we can we can reasonably, um, you know, say that after a while, this circuit will settle down and get back into. Um, it's like DC characteristics where there's no voltage across the inductor. It's acting like a short, and then we can um, we can get some some values for way at positive infinity. So let's see here. So how about this current at time equals infinity? So we're gonna have once we once we can ignore this because it's acting like a short eventually again. We'll just have two voltage sources around a loop with uh, two resistors, right? So we could say that we'll say that the total current is equal to the total voltage over the total resistance, right? So IL at, at positive infinity would be equal to, all right, what's the total voltage? We'd have a, a 10 degree rise and then a th uh, 10 volt rise and then a three volt drop. So that's seven volts, right? Seven volts times, what's the uh, total resistance? What are our resistance values? We have 
one kilo ohm and 50 ohms. Um, that is that is equal to 1,050 ohms. <sighs> this is supposed to go in the denominator. Seven volts over 1,050. That is equal to uh, one over 150 amps. Okay, so now we can put that in here. I prefer to keep stuff in um, fractions because they end up being a little more accurate. So, okay, so now we know a current and we could find um, the voltages across these resistors. We know, okay, yeah, we said it settled down, right? So the voltage across the uh, inductor is zero again. And now let's just find these voltage values by just taking the current and multiplying it by the resistances. So VR1 is going to be this voltage here. We have 1 over 150 amps flowing through 1 kilo ohm, right? That is VR1 is equal to... Uh, times 1,000 and that is equal to 20 over 3 volts. And VR2, remember these, uh, what I'm doing here is only, these are only valid for time positive infinity. So the same current is flowing through V2, uh, R2 now, right? So that's the current times the resistance value, which is 50 ohms. And that is equal to 1 over 3 volts. All right, so now we have our table filled in. Um, and now we're going to make differential equations that describe the behavior in, so in between T0 plus and positive infinity.